Okay, today I'm going to be walking you through how we can use Onshape to create a candle holder or a votive for Dia de los Muertos that looks like this. So this has a triangular base, and if we look at it from the top, it's got a flower-shaped top with a hole that's just big enough to drop in a standard tea light, which I guess has dimensions of 38 by 16 millimeters, 38 millimeter diameter, 16 millimeters in depth. So this is the type of shape we're going to create. Yours doesn't necessarily have to have a triangular bottom or a flower-shaped top. Those are just examples, but let's go through this process. So in Onshape, we're going to click on Create and Document, and I'm just going to call this Votive. In fact, I'm going to put my name in there so that when I export, uh, I know whose file is whose. I'd like you to do the same so that when it comes time to 3D print, I know who to go looking for when I pull up a given file. So we will create our new file, and you can see in Onshape there are three of these square shapes. Now these are actually just theoretical planes. They're shown as square, but they actually extend in both directions infinitely. So this is uh, strictly theoretical, but it gives us a place to start working on. And so we could draw our first sketch two-dimensionally on the top plane by clicking on it. And in Onshape, if you ever need, if you accidentally click too many things and you have more highlighted than you want, um, you can either click off in the white space or you can just hit spacebar to deselect everything. So we're going to click once on top plane and click sketch. I'm going to hit N on my keyboard and that's going to rotate things so I can look directly down from the top plane. Before I get too far into this, I need to click on this little menu, go to workspace units, and just make sure it's set to centimeters, not inches or millimeters. So I'm going to start by drawing the profile of a tea light. So I can double click on sketch to get back into editing mode. You can tell you're editing your sketch if you have these tools up here in this little pop-up window. And I'm going to call this tea light is the name of the sketch. And I'm going to grab my circle tool. I'm going to start right on this central dot called the origin and just drag out a little ways. And right now I have, if I click on my circle tool, I can disable it. A circle who's blue because its size hasn't been defined yet. I can still change it. So I'm going to press D on my keyboard for dimension and click once on the edge of the circle, then once over here. And now I can give it some dimensions. Now our tea light dimensions are 38 millimeter diameter. We're going to go 39 just to give ourselves a little bit of clearance. So we'll say 39 mm for millimeter and hit enter. And so now we have a 39 millimeter circle, which I can click top over here to see a little bit better. Um, so we'll call that tea light. We're actually just going to hit check and leave that sketch alone for now, just so we have it as a reference for what we're going to do later. If you ever get turned around, by the way, you can click with two fingers and rotate in on shape, but you can always use this little box to write yourself back to a known view. So I like this corner view right between top, front, and right. And so we have our basic T light in there. We're going to make another sketch on the top plane. So click once on top plane, click sketch, hit N on the keyboard. And now we're going to use what's called the inscribed polygon tool. And so we'll click once on it and click once over here. And then we will draw to where we are snapping to this horizontal line. And just something a little bigger than your tea light, maybe roughly this size. Um, this by default gives you a hexagon. But if I slide my mouse or my finger from side to side, I can choose the number of sides from three up to many more. So we'll do a pentagon for this particular one. So I'll click the mouse one is set to five. And then now I need to dimension, so I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard, how big this thing actually is. So I'm gonna click once on this dotted circle and then off to the side. And in centimeters, let's go ahead and make this seven centimeters. So it's just a little bigger than our tea light and we will call this um, base. And that's the base of our, our um, votive. So I'll hit check. And then I'm gonna once again look at my sketch plane. So far we've only created two-dimensional sketches. So we're going to take this base and actually uh, in a minute here we'll, we'll pull it into three dimensions but first we still need to make our top shape. So I'm going to click on top again and I need to create a plane that sits above this so I can draw something up in the air above it and eventually we'll sweep in between and connect the two. So with my top plane selected I'm going to choose this plane tool and then for my offset let's go ahead and use five centimeters and we will call this top uh, of votive plane. 
Okay, so now you can see we've created a new plane that sits above that. If that ends up being too thick, we can change it later. No harm done. So we're going to use that as our sketch plane now. So we'll click on it, click Sketch, hit N, and here is where we're going to start by bringing in our photo that we're going to trace for the top shape. And so if you look down here, um, next to DXF there's this little arrow where I can choose Insert Image. That's the one I want, in Image, not DXF or DWG. So I'm going to choose that. Down in the lower left I can choose Import. And I'm going to go, I already have a picture of a flower saved in my downloads or my desktop, so I'm going to choose Upload. And I just have to wait a moment for it to upload and process. You can close this notifications window. So here's my flower. If I click once on it, I can start to draw. Um, so what I want to do is grab some point that's out here on this line to the left of the origin. See how it turns yellow? I'm going to click once there, and then I can just position my mouse elsewhere uh, so that it's intentionally a little off-center, and I'll click again. So now my image is placed. Now what I need to do is place a point on the center of this bottom edge. So if I grab my point tool up here, and I just kind of eyeball where the center is, you can see it's right there, it snaps to it. So I'll click there, and now I have a point that's the center of my image, and I have a point that's the center of my chart. And so what I want to do is use this tool called Coincident. So up here, it's called Coincident. I'm going to click once on that blue dot and once on the origin. And they should be, oops. In fact, I'm going to undo that and hit spacebar. Let's add a point instead right in the dead center of my flower. So there's my flower point. I'm going to use my coincident tool to say this should be on the origin. Oops, and it moved my, my flower instead. So we're having a little issue getting this uh, right where we want it. So what I'm going to do actually is just delete this sketch and start this process over. So we'll grab our top plane, new sketch, we'll hit N to look at it, and then we will grab our image by clicking insert image. Flower is already uploaded so we can click and I'm just going to start by dragging somewhere else um, from the bottom left corner up to the top right and now as long as I have nothing selected I should be able to kind of reposition my image. And I'm going to get it as centered as I can so I can see where the base is. I definitely need to make sure that this circle that represents where the tea light will go is completely enclosed inside my image. So if I want to resize I can do that um, I believe by grabbing from one of the corners. That seems to be moving it. Um, and then we can go ahead and set dimensions on our image by hitting D and then choosing, this is around 12 centimeters. I actually just visually, I'm going to go ahead and say 14 centimeters, make it a little bigger, and then we will give the other side, um, actually it looks good, it looks good where it is. So we will call this top uh, flower. And if we hit check, you'll see that not a lot has changed. We still have nothing but two-dimensional shapes. So I'm going to double click on top flower and hit N. And this is where we want to actually go through and add some points based on our flower. So you can always zoom in and out by pushing up and down with two fingers, or you can hold control and click with two fingers to slide around. That's going to be really important in this step. So control and then clicking and dragging with two fingers. So we're going to grab the spline tool from up here and just start to click and add some points. This works kind of like the pen tool if you've used Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. You can see I didn't do a perfect job there, um, but I'm going to avoid letting it snap to anything and I'm just going to go through and roughly trace the outline of my flower shape. So any of these points I don't like, I can go back later. I can add more points and move these around. So I'm just going to do a rough job for the sake of the tutorial. Again, I just control clicked to allow myself to drag around my view and I'm going to go through and just do a rough job getting these points in mm -hmm. doesn't have to be perfect because of course our reference image won't be present in our 3D print if I want to make a tight corner I just put my points close together if I want to make a very long smooth sweeping edge I put them further apart okay I want to make sure that these final two points connect to one another, just like that. And now I have a closed sketch. You can see I have this blue continuous loop, and that's actually what's going to be uh, moved around. So if I turn off my spline tool, I can come in and grab individual points and start to, I could zoom way in and start to reshape and really hone in what this looks like. Again, I'm holding control to zoom in. Um, and so you can go through and really fine tune the shape that you've made. 
I'm going to leave mine as is for now because I think it's good enough for tutorial's sake. looks okay. And so what I'll do is hit green check to accept my sketch. Let me go back to that corner view. And now it's time to actually create our voter. This is going to go pretty quick. So if we click once on base and once on top flower or whatever you named it, there's a tool here called Loft, and it's going to take the shape of the flower and the shape of the base and figure out points in between them to create a three-dimensional shape from these two parallel 2D shapes. So if I click Loft, you'll see um, that it thinks for a second, and if I've done things right, I should get a three-dimensional shape. And so we will call this Main Body. That's the main body of our votive. I'm going to hit Check. Now you can see our sketches disappear because they're no longer necessary. We have the three-dimensional piece. And I'm going to hit P to hide these planes. So now I have a basic votive right here. I don't like how tall it is compared to how big, so I'm going to choose this top votive plane. Instead of 5 centimeters, I'm going to use 3. And now it will be a little bit shorter. It'll do all the same calculations again, only my votive is not quite so thick. And so the last thing I want to do is click once on the top face, make a new sketch there, hit N. And now this little circle, I want to click once on it and then click this Use Project Convert button. And that's going to bring that T-Light uh, sketch up on top of the um, photo. So I now have it drawn on the top. So we're going to call this T-Light Hole and hit Check. So that's the basic sketch for our T-Light Hole. We're going to now actually punch a hole into it by clicking once on the T-Light Hole sketch over here and then clicking the Extrude button. So we want to remove material, and uh, Google tells me 16 millimeters is the depth. We'll go just a little deeper, we'll call it 18 millimeters, and we'll call this again T-Light Hole, and we'll click check. So now we've punched a hole in our votive, we can click the little eye to hide the bottom original T-Light. We're very nearly done. The only thing I want to make sure we also do is click once on this edge at the top, and use our chamfer tool to create a little beveled edge. Um, we'll use uh, five millimeters to create a little bevel for our tea light to fall into. That looks a little too big, so I'll say three millimeters and click to see what it looks like. That looks a little better. And this will just give us sort of an easier way to drop the candle directly down into the hole. So this actually is ready to go for 3D printing. So the final step would be to right click on it, rename, instead of right clicking part one, rename, and I'm going to give this my name. I'll say Mitchell Christ Votive and hit enter. And then the last step is to click export. And I want to make sure that this has got a good name so that looks just fine. I might even remove Part Studio 1 and just leave that. STL is a perfectly fine format for this project and units are shown to me. So everything's good. I'll hit say OK. And it should download that file. You can actually go to my downloads and you can see it's still working. Um, there it is. If I double click, it'll actually open in, oops, wrong program, that's Xcode. Most computers it would open in preview, uh, and you could look at it, but you can always hit the space bar. Here's our three-dimensional shape as it's going to be printed. This is what I want you to email to me, and I can send it into the 3D printer. So hopefully they find this tutorial helpful. Of course, we'll have some time in class to answer questions, but do your best to go back and follow along to create a simple votive of your own shape.